Hi, I'm Mark McElligot. I'm the creator, the writer, artist, and voice of Starchy the Dark Spud. Hi, I'm John Warren. I'm the co-creator of Starchy the Dark Spud, as well as the inker, colorist, letterer, animator, web designer, pretty much whatever we need done. And we're going to walk you through the entire process here, how we start with pencils, move on to inks, and then on to coloring, computer animation, and finally the finished product. You sound kind of far away and staticky. Service is in hell. Um, I'm doing a video today to um, show you the process that uh, myself and my, my good friend and, and uh, co-creator John Warren uh, go through when we are um, collaborating um, on an animation. We, we are currently in the process of collaborating with Dave Sim of Cerebus fame and um, so we want to put this together and show you how it, it, it goes from from inception through breakdowns and and uh, the artwork the animation itself the uh post-production stuff inking coloring the whole nine yards so um let's start with part one um coming up with the idea breaking it down okay first of all we need to stretch most important part of any any adventure. If, if George Washington hadn't stretched before crossing the Potomac, Delaware, I don't know if he crossed a river, I saw a painting about it once. But if he hadn't stretched before that, we'd all be speaking English now. So anyway, here we go. Oh yeah, mother of God, they hurt! Ah! Okay, now the other side. Oh yeah, but kill me now, kill me! Oh, oh, oh! Okay, so now we're ready. Now we gotta pick our spots. I like using Blue Line Pro, and I've already done some breakdowns and layouts for what I'm gonna do. But, let me tell you the process prior to this. All right. So the first thing I did was think of something funny. Okay, I got something. So you do it like that. Next, draw it. It's just that simple. Okay. And I get sloppy with my line work. I, I rely an awful lot on Johnny, uh, my anchor, colorist, animator, um, to help me straighten all that out. He knows what the characters look like. He's been working with me for 20 years now, so he knows how to interpret what I'm uh, laying down. And he knows the characters, so. Most importantly, when you're through with the creative process, just as important as stretching is at the beginning, you need to reward yourself at the end after you've expended all that creative energy. So treat yourself to you know some chips or a, a hooker, um, and you know they, this this makes you look forward to the next project even more. You don't get tied down into the drudgery of um, drawing superhero potatoes. Uh, it can be very demanding work. There's not a lot of people out there doing that right now. Um, so after we're through with the, the actual penciling process and the writing process, the, 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 the funny lines, uh, my part is essentially over. Uh, except for recording the voice. I do the 
voice of Star G, which you can tell me is has that spud like quality. Um, I'm also developing the spud like figure. Um, but other than that, really, most of the work that goes into this is Johnny. Uh, I draw potatoes and I say funny things, um, or stupid things that I think are funny. Uh, either way. So, my part of it's done up till the conventions, pretty much at this point. So, uh, I'll turn you over to Johnny for the next step. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is what the artwork looks like as it's handed to me from Mark. You'll notice all the little sections that'll be animated later. They're all separate pieces here. And if we're in a real hurry, he will send me a scan and I directly ink from a blue line. Here's a quick look at the inking process. It's a little bit looser than how my uh, standard inks would turn out. Uh, but it's good for uh, demonstration purposes just to show you the process. And here's a look at some of the finished result. Now, a lot of times I'll leave out spots where the blacks will be filled in because it's a lot easier to just do that inside of the computer. And we changed the way that we were doing Cerebus's hair from how this was originally set up, so that's why there are pencil lines over here. Now once all the inks are finished, we move over to the uh, coloring process. I do pretty much all the coloring in Photoshop. I've been coloring Starchy for so long, it's kind of second nature to me, so I've got most of the uh, gradients and things already pre-programmed in. It's just a matter of lining up the textures and placing them where they're supposed to be. When you do this process, you kind of have to uh, visualize how the animation is going to look in your head. You'll have to create layers that uh, don't exist in the original artwork and sometimes draw things in that just aren't there to make everything fit together later. So it's a bit of a challenge, but it's always an interesting job. It's a bit more complex than just coloring for a standard comic book. Now, coloring service was a real joy. It's one of the most exciting things to work on a character that you've enjoyed for years and years and get to be a part of the creative process of that character. It's just been a real pleasure working with Dave Sim on this. He's a very, very giving person and very generous with his time. He pretty much left a lot of this up to, uh, to us to decide how the final product is going to look. Now here's a look at what the finished colors look like on the final product. And in this case, what the uh, layout of the type looks like as well. We use this as the preliminary uh, announcement that we had on Twitter and Facebook. Now if you're doing your job as a colorist correctly, it should add a whole new depth and feel to it. Almost like a 3D effect. Here's some comparisons of the before and after, so you can get a look at uh, how much of a difference it makes when you add the layer of the coloring on. Now, before we do the animation, we have to have the voice work done in order to sync the mouths up to the voices. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Recording Starchy and Service, part one. Cerebus? You you sound kind of far away and staticky. Oh, can you help me? I'm trying to lose my tired old image and become a more I don't know, more Yeah, yeah. The kind of hero that makes the fanboys empty their wallets in awe. What do you mean? 
mean the whole berserker rage, gritted teeth thing? Uh, it's just not, I don't know, it's just not, but you know, potato, you know what I mean? And the dental bill, every two weeks I need another layer of enamel for my molars. Now from there we move on to the animation process. Uh, when I discussed this with Dave on the phone, he mentioned that uh, in the series that they're doing right now, they used wood carvings by Gustav Dore. Now he didn't say that we had to do that, but he threw it out there as an option. After looking through the work that he's doing now, I thought that was a great way to go. I actually love what he's working on right now. Um, so what I did, I, I went on uh, Creative Commons and selected some of the artwork I wanted to use for the project. Started piecing together some things to go with it to kind of add our own little flavor to it. One of the things that I do in a lot of the Dark Spud videos is I hide Easter eggs in the background. In this particular case, I'll point one out. In the background here, you'll notice a couple of country singers which you may or may not recognize. Uh, but the joke that is above their heads relates to episode 7 of Dark Spud. And if you watch the episode, you'll get the joke. Regardless, uh, one of the country singers is Charlie Daniels. And he's obviously not dead, and I would assume not go to hell if he was dead. Of course, we're poking fun of the song Devil Went Down to Georgia. We thought perhaps this time for the rematch, uh, they have it in hell. That is, of course, if they actually are in hell. Uh, Dave Sim has been leaving this a little bit uh, ambiguous, a little bit up to the interpretation of the reader with his uh, new comic series, so I thought we should do the same thing with this uh, video. Just partly why when Starchy starts off, he's got a cord hooked up to his cell phone that isn't attached to anything in the wall, leaving it to the viewer as to whether he's imagining the whole thing or not. Or perhaps Cerebus is imagining him. He could be in limbo or in a hospital. Between life and death, it's hard to say. A lot of what I do as an animator is to take flat artwork and photos and combine them in layers and make them move around. So Dave just recently gave me permission to use the stat artwork of Cerebus that he's been using in his new series, Cerebus in Hell, which is exciting because some of his artwork will now appear in the animation as well. But of course I had to add my own touches and make it move around so that it's not just a static image. So I drew an arm at several different placements so he could raise his sword. And I made it so he can blink and in some parts of the video he even talks. And since Dave's also been using Gustav Doré artwork in his backgrounds for his new series, I decided to combine images from some of his different wood carvings and move the elements around to give his carvings a feel as though they're moving. To bring them all a little bit to life for the animation, you'll see all sorts of things happening in the background behind Cerebus through the video. Depending on the amount of layering you want, you can add creatures flying around, things falling out of the sky, any number of things. It's pretty much limitless. And I'm just using basic programs for the animation. We're really not attempting to be better at animating than anybody else. This isn't going to be Disney Pixar, but it is original and it's its own thing. And that's really all we're shooting for. And that's something that I picked up from Steve Jobs. His point at Apple wasn't necessarily trying to be better than all of his competition, but simply to be different. I do a lot of different types of uh, processes to put these together. In this case, I am working with Blue Screen with Cerebus, and the backgrounds will be uh, imported later and composited together. A lot of times I do things in layers so I can put a lot more action in and uh, have it be a lot more complex in the finished scene. 